But as the baseball season begins, oh, I, I'm in. I'm in full. Baby, I love it. Baseball, I love it. It's it's the best. It's really it's, it's it's great. I'm watching Texas play, you know, and it's like super bright and sunny. And I look outside my window, <laughs> and there's sleet on the ground, and I hate my life. But it snows for like ten minutes. It's and unbelievable. Then, uh, and you know and you got gone. you got the MLB opening up in Cleveland because they're idiots, and it's ten degrees on opening day, and they have to mm-hmm. cancel. But overall, I mean, you have this influx of young talent just taking over the league and people like Goose Gossage was saying, oh, they're, they're, they're destroying the integrity of the game. It's like, what are you talking about? Shut up, Goose. These bat flips and, the, and uh, this emotion and these personalities only now, make it better. Now, you know what I do have a problem with? Like, I I had no problem with Jose Batista, as uh, Tim Cochin would say, <laughs> but I did have a problem with that slide. I had a problem with that slide that he did. Where the one that if you missed it, right? Then was it their it third was, or second game against the Rays this yeah, season? Yeah, and it was uh, late in the game, trying to break up a double play, kind of slid late, was kind of inside the bag, trying to disrupt. Well, the it throw. wasn't just he slid it; he was taking that whole entire arm mm-hmm. and trying to like flick his leg up, right? And it's like, come on, Chase. I thought Chase yeah. Utley played for the Dodgers, not the Blue Jays. Well, that's that's one of the, you know what I don't know. They they implemented these rules, and I was a second baseman, so mm-hmm. I'm kind of biased for the fielder because they took away the the neighborhood play, which kind of pissed me off. Because how you know how are you supposed to stay on the bag? It's just as a player that kind of bothered me because it's very hard to just stay on the bag mm-hmm. as long as you could, and then you know having a guy bearing down on you, 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 the neighborhood play is beneficial for not only the game, but it's, it's safety of those players. Explain it for those of us so who the neighborhood are play, oblivious. So they would, the second baseman receives the ball or the shortstop, and as long as they're in the vicinity of the second base bag, they don't necessarily have to be like a first baseman and stay on there oh, okay. as they receive the ball. They could just catch it and all in one motion okay. you know, make the play. As long as they're in the vicinity, they're going to call the guy out. And that, especially with, the rule before the change with runners bearing down on the on the fielder, they were able to avoid slides much more effectively. But mm-hmm. now that the rule states that you have to slide directly into the bag, you can't take a course like Bautista did, and that's a reason why they made the call. That that you know, it's 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 changing the game, and I think it's I think it's a positive thing that they took away this dangerous slide because we saw what happened in the uh, NLCS with Tejada and Utley. That or I'm sorry, in the NLDS and. You know, you want to eliminate that play, but at the same time, the neighborhood play, I don't know, I think you're in, still endangering the fielder there, but that's neither here nor there, I think. That's just one of the kind of the minor changes that the MLB made, but what the biggest change that I'm seeing is just the overall increase in talent, especially with guys like Bryce Harper. Just He's like 23 years old. Acting, don't forget about a story in Colorado. Oh, I'm getting to him. <laughs> Bryce Harper, 23 years old, being the, pretty much the face of the league, along with Mike Trout and Carlos Correa emerging as well. So it's one of those things where these young players are just taking over. And it's kind of refreshing as a baseball fan because it, it brings more excitement. And it could mean that this is the most exciting season that I've seen since, I don't know, I've been watching the game. I just, I, I'm really excited about this baseball season because you got guys like Trevor Story making his major league debut. Three home runs in his fir- or four home runs in his first three games, unheard of. First player in Major League Baseball history to do that in his debut in his first three games. And then you have Big Poppy on his retirement season, mm-hmm. hitting home runs. You know to start the year, Robinson Cano coming back, hitting four home runs, and you know, all four of his hits have been home runs. So it's just it's super refreshing to have baseball back, and it's awesome to see that all these young players are are doing well. Guys, I didn't even mention the Cubs and what they have. So. Oh, don't worry, I was going to get to the Cubs and. To me, it's I, the baseball season for me has usually been okay. It started okay, but I've got basketball and I've got other sports that I can kind of focus my attention to, like football off season, because that has been more important to me than opening day. Like last year, it was the opening day on Easter, Cubs mm-hmm. Cardinals. I was at then. I fell off. And it always, it's like, I'll pick up around June, July. Yeah. After the finals are done, our NBA finals are done. and But this year, it's like. Coming on strong. Cubs win two. I'm fucking that, excited that I think the Cubs a lot have finally won two the, in a row yeah, to start a season. Especially in Chicago, the interest level is there because 
The White Sox Our teams are finally de- like the Cubs are good. The Sox look like they may be decent. Well, yeah, the Cubs just came off a 97 win season well, in the yeah. RLCS, and they made more moves in the offseason to suggest. And this looks like a team that's not going to be a false promise like they've been in the past. Sure. And the White Sox, too, made moves to improve their roster much mm-hmm. more than they did the year prior. And they're exciting. They're two and one to start the year, so or three and one to start the year. So that's, I think it's just an overall positive thing that both teams are good in Chicago, but as a whole, and you look at the American League, and there are teams stacked. Like, each division is stacked with competition. I mean, it's just a total toss-up. For, You're talking about just the Centrals? No, and I'm saying in You're the American talking, League, okay. period. There are so many teams throughout each division that could, quite frankly, win the division. The East was hard for me. Yeah. To I'm, pick a... Because I, I, I eventually sat on... The Blue Jays, right? But there was a part of me that I'm like, I kind of want to pick the Red Sox, and you to can maybe... throw the Yankees into that conversation mm-hmm. too, especially if Starlin Castro plays like he has been. He's unreal so far. Well, and for now, let's let's see if he cools off like he used to. Uh, well, that's you know, I'm rooting for him. You know, I always love Castro. You know, it was really great to see. It was really great to see Zach Granke get all get this fucking up. money in the off season. <laughs> And then get lit up by the Rockies. Four innings, yeah. nine hits, seven runs, all of them earned, and only two strikeouts to three home runs. Yeah, that's that's a team that in the Diamondbacks that I want to see fail because they just, well, first of all, I think their front office is a bunch of just idiots, and they mm-hmm. dismiss the fact that sabermetrics play in a role in players' success because they do things the old-fashioned way that they like to call it, but they traded their top shortstop for... You know, Shelby Miller, and now Shelby Miller gets lit up in his first start as a Diamondback. And, I mean, they expect to compete in the NL West, but I hope they don't because I can't stand the Diamondbacks and their stupid-ass jerseys that are new. But, <laughs> you mean the bloody sock jerseys? Yeah. And, if, you're, if you're sitting there going, but Ricky, uh, what was... The Diamondbacks did get the win when Miller pitched. Yeah, because the Rockies, are the pitching staff is just but, a bunch of nobodies. Well, but that's because... Miller didn't get the W. Miller went six innings, eight hits, six runs, all of them earned. Two strikeouts, three home runs. Huh. <laughs> Same as uh, Granke in game one. But, I mean, to me, it was just nice for me. I know you said the Diamondbacks both ways, but just seeing Granke get lit up. It's yeah. like you left mm-hmm. L.A. because you fucking wanted the money. Mm-hmm. And look at what happened. And uh, I want to go back to what I was saying about the competitive uh, American League. Mm-hmm. It's like... You look at the East, we were talking about three teams could possibly win it. The AL Central is literally up for grabs. Anybody could take it, even the Twins. I mean, right now, that I mean, it's early, but right now the uh, Tigers lead the division. Well, yeah, I the Tigers, we'll, we'll see if that lineup can carry them because they're, I'm not really sold on their rotation, but I don't know. I, I think it's well, still the Well, you mean Royals. their rotation without David Price. Right. And, and I mean, that's a big reason why yeah. I kind of wanted to pick the Red Sox in the East, maybe not even to win the division, but to, for a wild card, mm-hmm. because just solely because of the addition of David Price. Yeah, but, but beyond him, it's like you got to count on Porcello mm-hmm. and Buckholtz, who are just who were well. Buckholtz was ba- was good if he was, mm-hmm. when he was healthy, but Porcello was just straight trash, and they gave him all this money, which was kind of comical to me. But I was a guy who wanted Porcello to go to the Cubs, but now that you know he he signed this huge contract, but he's totally underperforming. But in the AL Central. Totally up for grabs. We don't really have to go in depth about it because we yeah. talked about it enough. AL West, but uh, really a three team race. The Angels kind of suck. Uh, the Mariners are in it, I think, but I think it's just going to become. Again, They're in it for now. I mean, you talk about. Um, but yeah, you it'll were come talking down to the Rangers and you Astros. were talking to me before the podcast about how this has been a just season of first so far. Right. What about the fucking uh, weird. Um, Situation that happened in King Felix's start, how he lost that game by only giving up. Oh yeah, what was it? opening one day run. he gave up, one, he gave up hit one hit and they lost and uh, gave up those uh, lost three to two runs to. Yeah, they lose three to two, and he gave up the one hit, mm-hmm, the blooper, three runs on one hit. Mm-hmm. Well, it's That's because baseball. he he walked a ton of guys. Sure. They've, what did he walk five guys in that game? Yeah, it was not. Uh, it's not his best outing. It was, but you look at one hit and you go, huh? Yeah, he didn't do good. that bad, and they uh, they only lost three to two. But I mean, that was a first. We've got Trevor Story 
And what was Debuting? it? He's oh. got the home runs in four straight games. Yeah, no, he's the first player in MLB history to home or to homer in his first three games as a major league baseball player. But another first, you got Kent, Kenta Maeda, the the big time Japanese uh, starter, the Dodgers signed, who mm-hmm. is, looked really good in his first start, but he homered. And this, I'm talking. This is a guy who spent his entire career overseas. First start seeing MLB pitching. He hits a home run, mm-hmm. and then he also shuts out the Padres, who look terrible. But still, I, that was just so crazy. Like, you don't understand. <laughs> this stuff doesn't happen, you know? It's just so many weird oddities that started the season in baseball. It's just so exciting to have I'm back. excited. I, oh, I, I think it. I honestly think this could be the best season that we see in baseball and, yeah. for some time. And a lot has to do with the competitive American League, and it also has well, to I do... Well, I mean, you're talking a lot about the American League, but I but, mean, and then the, the National, National League, League, like they have... The Pirates, like, I didn't expect them to be 3-0 to start the year, or even the fucking Reds... Well, okay, the the Reds played the Phillies, let's be honest. You know, the Reds are garbage. But I mean, the Pirates played the Cardinals? No, yeah, the, I picked, Card- the Pirates I picked the Cardinals really to win a wild card, and I mean, I know mm-hmm. it's still early, but I mean... I feel like the West is going to be... Giants. Well, the Giants are going to end up winning it, let's be honest. But the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks, if the Rockies play like they did against the Diamondbacks all year, we could have a four-team race there. And the Nationals, under Dusty, well, right now they're good. But let's wait till later Mm -hmm. in the season when all of their arms are dead, Mm because that's what Dusty Baker does. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the, the Mets, and I, I feel like the least competitive division will be that East. Yeah. But, I mean, still, you, you got to give some credit to the Marlins. We'll the, see. I would we'll say, see. though, that in the National League, there are nine legit competitors, and I include the Marlins only because I would say they're around God, I 500. Just, I just hope my Cubs win it all. They And I think they will. I think they have I enough. Hope. I think they will. I hope. But compared to the American League, there's like, I would say like, all of them are, mm-hmm. are very good. So 15 out of the 15 in the American League compared to 9 out of 15 in the National League. So 24, 24 really good baseball teams this year. That's going to lead to a lot of exciting stuff. No, I seriously, I can't wait. This this has been the first baseball season that I've been excited for from the get-go. And with that, I want to thank Ricky Widmer for joining me on the Behind the Pen once again. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Most Valuable Podcasts, and also follow us on Snapchat and on Twitter. We're at Most Valuable Pod. It's a lot of fun. You guys, it's it's new. We should do it. You should do it because I'm doing it. And you can follow me on Twitter at Rankin906. You can follow Ricky at Ricky Widmer. Once again, thank you for listening, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.